with any luck this will be a slightly better introduction <laughs> to this video than when I tried to start this about an hour ago and it was still so pitch black outside that I might as well have been a smudge on the screen, a faceless smudge introducing this video. Some kind of wispy, faceless, ghostly smudge. Good morning friends! Welcome back to my channel, how's it going? I probably sound a little bit sleepy and like I haven't spoken out loud yet um, because that would that's exactly the case. <laughs> I've started my day, I was actually wrapped up in blankets, I've slightly thawed out now, um, but I've started my day at my desk. I have to apologise in advance because this is going to be one of those incredibly annoying things that people on the internet do sometimes when they tell you that they've just done something really exciting but they can't tell you what it is. It genuinely makes me slightly anxious and afraid when people say that online. So I want to reassure you that um, it's nothing to feel that way about and it doesn't affect anybody else or any anything else really. Um, but in a strange way, me sitting here in my pyjamas watching the sun come up this morning is actually a really big moment and it feels like something I should just acknowledge on the camera right now because it would be strange not to because it literally just felt like my heart stopped when I sent that email a moment ago but now it has gone off into the ether and it is out of my hands <laughs> I simply wash my hands of it and what will be will be very exciting but I am also now getting to the point where I'm verging on terrified <laughs> honestly um but hey I have hit send I have sent the email with the attachment and it's a big one um so I'm feeling mostly scared but also very proud and pleased so let's mark this occasion by going to have a shower <laughs> let's go and get some actual proper daytime clothes on let's go and do something about the dark shadows under my eyes which look like they might be related to Sauron somehow for anyone else who is early start at desk kind of thing I just have to mention this little lamp, uh, this is actually from Urban Outfitters, it's a little kind of retro inspired mushroom lamp um, and I just have to give it a shout out as a little hack for making my mornings a lot more pleasant. It's so warm and glowy and gives my desk such a nice atmosphere. Something about it just being in the corner of my vision really uh, turns my desk from like a cold work environment to something quite comforting when I'm sitting here in the dark. Honestly with that switched on and a little coffee coffee in hand, my notebook's next to me. I'm pretty much good to go. Oh, and a blanket as well because, I mean, I'm only human now, come on. I've just finished up the shower gel that we took on holiday to America, actually. This is Sticky Dates, which I've never had before, but one of you guys recommended this to me and I don't know whether this is going to sound appealing to the average person. It's literally like showering in sticky toffee pudding. <laughs> if you are a girly who likes, you know, likes to smell like a baked good, you're into your vanillas and your sweet kind of baked good pastry smells. <laughs> if you like to smell like walking into Gales on a Sunday afternoon, this is the one for you, my friend. We're now on to my number one forever and always, my favorite smell, although I'm not convinced about how glittery they seem to have made it this year, but we're just gonna have to embrace that. I mean, tis the season, and what is December for if not taking a shower and coming out looking like a disco ball and also a little bit like a James Bond gold-based villain? I'm gonna tell you for a fact that the most fun part of my makeup routine these days is contouring with this like grey-toned stick because whenever I draw the like shapes onto my face, it makes me feel like I'm putting on Dracula makeup and I enjoy it every day. Please take any makeup related advice from me. <laughs> We're very much with a grain of salt. We all remember the Average Girl Tries videos and things haven't really improved very much since then. But seeing as I have just given it a shout out for being a great vampire face paint tool, <laughs> I will also mention that it is actually a very nice little makeup product. It's from Milk Makeup. It's their Sculpt Stick in the shade Toasted. This was Shock Horror, a TikTok influenced purchase because I am nothing if not a piece of garbage for being influenced on TikTok every day of my life. But I particularly like it because it's very, very cool toned. And when it comes to contouring and stuff, honestly, my whole adult life, I have never found anything cool enough to kind of make actual shadow shapes in my face 
which is the uncomplicated way of explaining contouring. When I was like 18, I literally used to use a grey eyeshadow <laughs> for my contouring. It was one of those like one pan Rimmel plastic eyeshadows. And I used to use grey to like carve my cheekbones in. I probably looked severely ill at all times, but I thought it was a great look at the time and I thought it was a genius hack. And I remember a girl at uni being like, why are you putting grey eyeshadow on your face? And me being like, actually, this is a very clever idea. Uh, she probably had a point on reflection. And I'm quite a rosy-cheeked, red-faced, ruddy human being anyway. So the more blush, the merrier, if you ask me. And look what I had to do this morning as well. This is when you know you love a makeup product. I've literally had to cut my Glossier skin tint open because there's loads of products still in there and I couldn't get any more out of the thing. But look at that, I would have wasted all of that. That was risky. So this is what I wear pretty much every day now. It's definitely kind of like my favorite skin base i would say perfecting skin tint i wear the shade g10 uh just to warn you though you'll put it on your face and be like this is this is doing less than nothing <laughs> to my skin but after a minute or so i feel like i then catch my skin and i'm like oh this looks really glossy and glassy and it doesn't cover much but it covers enough to still look like skin but just kind of like slightly turned up a notch. So while I pop a little bit of mascara on for these peepers, uh, let me give you a little rundown of what we're gonna get up to today. First stop, stop number one on the itinerary is we're gonna go via the jewelers into town. Jewelers is the first stop on the list because I've got to leave my engagement ring to get resized. I really don't wanna leave it behind, but I think it's gonna take at least a few days. It's certainly not like drastically too big, um, but I have got a little kind of like bumper <laughs> on the back of it to make sure that it doesn't slip off and I know that you're supposed to be able to kind of like twizzle it round and stuff and I would like to be able to move it around a little bit I don't like to feel kind of like claust claustrophobic fingers is that a thing and I know you have to account for like swelling and different weather and stuff um, but it just feels a little bit too loose for me to be super comfortable about where is my hairbrush there it is next to the cat <laughs> Of course. Rather than getting off at Oxford Street, I'm actually going to go all the way up to St Pancras Station, King's Cross, um, to see the Christmas tree that they've got there this year. They always have like a glorious, gorgeous, branded Christmas tree. Um, I think there's been like a Tiffany one. But whoever was in charge of designing this Christmas tree really knew what they were doing because it's just perfection. And if I miss it, even though I don't really want to go into town in December, um, but if I miss it, I know I'm going to kick myself and I really, really want to see it. And I know that a lot of you guys will love it too, because it's just bookworm central around here. It's literally a Christmas tree made of books and bookcases and bookshelves. Um, and it's absolutely, from what I've seen online anyway, it's absolutely stunning. It genuinely looks very magical. And then I will have to enter self-sabotage mode and I will have to braid the shops because I want to get some wrapping paper, I want to get some ribbon, and there's a couple of Christmas gifts that I might as well pick up while I'm in town as well. So a few little errands to get through, but they're all very Christmassy and festive and a little bit magical. So shall we head out? I think I'm ready. My hair looks a bit flat, but I can't be bothered to do anything with it because it's very rainy and grey out there anyway. So I'm going to have to get bundled up. Um, let me show you what I'm wearing. Okay, note to self, I really need to clean this mirror. Um, so apologies about the... We don't even have kids to excuse that. I mean, that's literally my own sticky fingers on this mirror. It's also a bit of a mess around here because everything has been usurped out of the living room for the Christmas tree. Outfit is, I mean, of course, my Levi ribcage jeans. I don't really wear anything else anymore. Uh, this is the Vermont sweatshirt that I picked up while we were away. Uh, this, But jumper and belt is actually slightly giving Santa but hey, tis the season. This will show you the neck properly. So it's kind of like a turtleneck, but I find turtlenecks <laughs> a little bit stressful. Sometimes they just make me feel a little bit too bundled up and quite sweaty, um, but I really like the look of them, especially under big sweatshirts like this. It's like a proper retro look, isn't it? But I stumbled across this one on Abercrombie, which is one of my favorite places to shop these days. I love their stuff and it's got like a little lettuce trim to it and it's quite a lightweight ribbed long sleeve layer um which doesn't feel too hot and sweaty so this was a really good find i'll make sure to link this down below actually because they've got it in black too and i just feel like they're really handy to have in your wardrobe to layer up for winter does it look slightly like a neck brace perhaps <laughs>
frazzling trip <laughs> I would say but you can't you can't go to Oxford Street at any point in December and not expect to leave without at least a little frazzle. I wish they did actually give you actual frazzles as you left for like a valiant effort that would make things a lot better if you just left with a little packet of crisps. It was pretty successful though I think I got everything I wanted. You know when you leave and you're like have I done everything? Um, I think so. So I thought I would plonk myself down and show you what I picked up. I can't work out whether my camera's grubby or if the evening light is just absolutely terrible. I say evening, it's half past four <laughs> and it's pitch black outside. Well, first things first, highlight of the day was absolutely 100% completely the Christmas tree at St Pancras. I loved it. My little book loving heart was singing and it's so weirdly wholesome to see everybody enjoying it in the middle of the station. If you fancy going to have a look at it, it's right by, I think it's kind of near like where you would go and get the Eurostar, which is just like the everlasting struggle of being at St Pancras, isn't it? It's like, should I just get on the Eurostar? Like I could literally, I could be in Disneyland in hours if I just get on that train right there. So if you are making a trip to London pre-Christmas, in my opinion, that is a must see. It is absolutely stunning and you could get some gorgeous photos in front of it. <laughs> my one disclaimer for it, I will say, when it comes to sitting in those little booths, so there's, I think there's eight, and then in each of them you can sit and listen to an audiobook that's being played. It's like five minute snippets of like classic stories that are being played in each booth. And when it comes to getting a seat in one of those booths, people are <laughs> ruthless cutthroat Christmas. I was just stood waiting like so like politely and, and I was like oh, oh no you go you, you don't worry you, you go you go oh no 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 it's fine I'll, I'll, I'll jump in after you oh, oh no 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 oh, you. I was stood there for so long <laughs> and even when I did finally manage to plonk my bum on one of those booths there was this man just like literally standing like here waiting for me to leave. So fair warning, it's one of those ultimate London like Instagram versus reality moments. So I did really well. I mostly went for wrapping, like gift wrapping stuff. And I got some really cute little bargains actually. A couple of other things along the way because it would be rude not to. And I did actually do, <laughs> well, I bought one Christmas present for myself which I'm planning to wear tomorrow. So that probably doesn't really count. <laughs> but in a slightly more productive, happy turn of events, I actually got a Christmas present for my brother too. And there's a bit of a story to this one because I played this with some friends. I played it ages ago, but I made a mental note way back when, it's been in my phone for ages, that it would make a good gift idea for my brother because he is impossible to buy presents for. Uh, anyone with a brother, I am sure you will know why are they just the weirdest creatures? So I've known for ages that I was going to get him that. But as you may or may not know, I work with Big Potato Games on kind of like a, a long-standing project together. And I was due to sit down and have a little chat about how some of their games would make really great gift ideas anyway. So this little portion of the vlog is very kindly sponsored by Big Potato Games. But I mean, I literally went in and bought this today. Oh, there's a sand timer in here. I can hear it. That's slightly ominous. If you're not familiar with Big Potato Games, they're pretty much like the Pixar of the board game world. They're so cool, they're so fun, they're so friendly, their customer service is amazing. They replace missing parts for you, which I really just feel sums up their whole ethos so nicely. All of their games are ridiculously fun and hilarious, but they are also really straightforward, very, very easy to get into. The rules can be summed up like that. A lot of their games are completely plastic free. I think they're like 64% plastic free across the board now. Um, across the board. The board game. And if you are stuck for gift ideas for anybody in your friends and family, there will be a big potato games game that will suit them to a T. Or maybe you are in charge of Christmas day this year and you're trying to figure out what to do with everybody. Maybe you've got a Christmas gathering or a party coming up. 
New Year's Eve. These ones that I've picked out to show you would be perfect to factor in to your festive plans. And little bonus, I have a discount code. I've got a 20% off code, which can save you a nice bit of money. It's Lucywood20, but I'll pop all the info you need in the description box down below. So I'm gonna start with this one, which I picked up for my brother. Uh, Sam, I don't think you watch any of my videos ever, uh, but on the off chance that you do, Please look away now. As I said, he is an impossible human being to buy for. I think we've all got one of those in the family, but he likes making things. He enjoys Wallace and Gromit. So this was a no brainer to me. <laughs> you can play this one as long as you've got two players. I would say this is a perfect family game. And the quick version is that you pick up a card, which will tell you what to make. You grab the clay, you start the timer and you make it as quickly as possible. And there'll also be a little challenge on the card that you have to do with the clay. And I think this is a good one because it will basically decide for itself how chaotic it's gonna be. There's a lot of kind of like moving around. It's quite action packed and fast paced. And it's a collaboration with Ardman Animations. So it's covered in Wallace and Gromit and Chicken Run and Morph and Shaun the Sheep and it's just a great time. I feel like this is a really good gift. Another one that I think would be a great family gift. In fact, I happen to know that someone close to me, I won't say who, just in case, but all I will say is that someone close to me has purchased this for their family Christmas because of the last time we played it together and we had such a good laugh. So there's another glowing recommendation for you. Um, this one is Sounds Fishy. Ooh, shiny. When it's your turn, there's a stack of cards that all have slightly strange questions on them. And on the other side of that card will be the correct answer. So the other people in the circle can see that correct answer. And one of the people in the circle will say the correct answer but everybody else in that circle will say an incorrect answer that they have made up. And it's up to you to get your points to spot which ones are the red herrings. It brings out the most like hilarious chaos. We took this on, on a family holiday that we went on with Adam's family. And I think probably the most classic moment of the holiday came from playing this game. And literally whenever I think about it, it was one of those like such joyful moments where literally everybody around the table is cry laughing. If you're on the hunt for a good little party game to keep in the cupboard, you can't say um. As you might have heard just then, there is a bell inside this one. It doesn't come much more what it says on the tin than this one. You basically have to describe ridiculous word combinations, as many of them as you can before the time runs out. Your, your team has to guess them. But obviously the crux of the matter is, you can't say um. The more you play, the harder it gets and things really descend into madness slightly because you get things chucked in the mix, like everybody change seats and do everything in a silly high-pitched voice. So for instance, top of the pile, pot noodle. That would be a plastic container that holds carbohydrates shaped like Justin Timberlake's hair that you pour hot water onto and it becomes a delicious snack. If you've got a secret Santa, either with like girlfriends or work people, and you don't want to spend too much, but you genuinely want to get something really good, um, or just as, as like a really great stocking filler for a friend actually, I think Get The Ick is probably my ultimate recommendation for that. I recently took this on a weekend to Centre Parks with some girlfriends and we, cry laughed playing this. There was actual screaming. In this little box, you will find a stack of cards that all have what can only be described as icks written on them. They hold their nose when they jump into a swimming pool, seeing them write hee hee in a text. And you basically have to bet which ones you think your friends will find to be the biggest ick and any that you think they might actually secretly have a little bit of a soft spot for, which it turns out that in my friends, actually quite a lot of them. <laughs> this is also a great one for travel. It's such a little box, so you can just chuck it in your bag and take it away with you. Um, and it's the perfect one for any quality girl time you've got coming up over Christmas. So seeing as I picked up my bathing clay today, I just thought that was such perfect timing for me to give you a couple of little recommendations. Don't forget Lucy Wood 20 will get you 20% off on the Big Potato website, and I'll pop everything you need to know in the description box down below. Okay, I've now got some ridiculously cute wrapping paper to show you. So I'm gonna pop that on the sofa so I can show you properly. I think that so, most random purchase of the day uh, probably goes to these. What are these in Tiger? And for some reason, they struck a nostalgia chord that I didn't even know was in my soul. Looking at them now, I feel like maybe they were either sweets that I had on holiday when I was little, maybe. Or, thinking about it, I might have had rubbers <laughs> that looked like these. Erasers, if you're in America. And something about them is just 
strangely familiar. Can anyone explain that to me? 90s kids, <laughs> explain this one. I don't think I've ever tasted that before, so I don't know what is going on in my brain. Here is my absolutely ridiculously adorable little wrapping haul. Um, these three are from Next, so let's start with these. These are on three for two. Instantly fell in love with this one, which is covered in ridiculously cute little illustrations of like mittens and sweaters and scarves. Just thought that was really, really sweet, and I thought with a nice little ribbon. That would be a really pretty one. I like the kind of like dusky blue. Next up are some particularly hairy looking Highland Coos, but I thought these were great. They're wearing Santa hats. And if you didn't know, Adam's family name is Bull. So these Highland cows with little bull horns feature quite a lot in their life. So I thought this would be a good paper to wrap up the bull presents with. And this one, I mean, I'm honestly tempted to kind of like frame this and turn into some kind of Christmas artwork. It's so beautiful. It's a Peter Rabbit Christmas wrapping paper. I am just completely in love with this like vintage style Peter Rabbit Christmas. Maybe that's my official festive aesthetic this year. And I then went to Tiger as well. I really like this one. This is brown paper, which always looks really nice when you tie it up with a ribbon, but this is covered in little candy canes with bows on them. Really, really simple. I then got some packs of brown tags, splashed out and got some ribbon. I really like Tiger's ribbon. I normally pick it up from there every Christmas. It's a pretty decent price for quite a lot of ribbon. So I got some classic red because I felt like together that would be a really nice combo. And then I also really liked this gold as well. And I also thought I might do some nice little floppy bows to tie on the Christmas tree with these too. Last but certainly no means least, I have two things <laughs> left to show you. This is a little picture frame, which is actually for a craft that I'm gonna have a go at doing something useful with. I was on the hunt for a little picture frame, just like a, a mini one like this, because when Adam proposed, sorry to just talk about that all the time, but I'm still very excited about it. I found a perfect little autumn red leaf. So I took it with me and pressed it inside a book for the whole time that we were away. And it's, I mean, it's come home in one piece. It's very fragile and very crispy. Um, but I just thought it would be quite cute to just have like a little single leaf against some nice paper in a little frame and then I can write like Little Pond October 2023. Not optimistic it's gonna look great, I think it will almost certainly just look like a very dead leaf in a frame. <laughs> Last but by no means least, when one goes to Soho, <laughs> one must go to Creme. I guess maybe to go alongside my recommendation to visit the book Christmas tree this year, if you're gonna come all that way and you're gonna go in and see the Christmas tree, I would also just add on to that. I would just tack onto that if you're gonna do some shopping. Swinging by Creme London. It's in Soho. Um, it's very easy to find. It's near Oxford Street, it's near Tottenham Court Road. So if you're around that area, follow the glorious smell of the world's best cookies. They are a small fortune and you will have to like remortgage your house to buy a box of them. I think they're like £4.50 each. Um, but I say each, one cookie from Creme is not one cookie. One cookie from Creme is like, it's at least two cookies. I think about these cookies all the time, honestly. And whenever I have an excuse to buy someone a nice like celebratory gift, like if someone gets a new job or a new baby or something, Creme cookies are always my gift go-to. One for me, and I got one for Adam. I got him the milk chocolate, classic. And I got one of my favorite snacks in the world, which is their white chocolate and miso. I'll do you a little, uh, oh. Oh, <laughs> kind of crispy on the top and they are so squishy and gooey in the middle. They're basically like cookie dough in the middle. It's true love, honestly. <laughs> I've realized now what this look reminds me of. It's wham. <laughs> I feel like it would be wrong of me to do anything <laughs> connected to a festive vlog and not show you how we've decorated for Christmas because we did this on Saturday um, and as you can see we've got added fairy lights which honestly fairy lights really just raise all the levels of every kind that I need for maintaining <laughs> a good balance in my mind body and soul it turns out fairy lights are just the key and this is pretty much the only room that we decorate really um, I mean I've put some potpourri in the kitchen <laughs> 
One man's trash is another man's potpourri. <laughs> Pretty much the main room that we decorate. So as you can see, I, I really have gone to town. We also have these little mirrored trees here. These are from Oliver Bonus. We have a Christmas candle. Obviously this one is Christmas Wish from Neom. These little white trees, which I randomly found in a stationery store absolutely years ago. Um, I've got my Christmas crockery out. I always get this in the anthropology sale in January. So keep an eye out for it because their Christmas stuff is absolutely beautiful. Um, so when we have our Christmas coffee morning next weekend, I can put our little snacks on there for all our friends. A couple of the classic Ikea stars hanging off the curtains. And then, da 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 da, the main attraction. My motto when it comes to Christmas tree is more is more, uh, chaos reigns. And then we've got all sorts. We've got ones that we picked up in Florida. Uh, we've got this gorgeous little hand-drawn one. Which one of you guys sent to me actually? It was so kind of you. I'll make sure to link your illustrations down below. Got quite a lot of these little felt ones, which I made with an advent calendar one year. More handmade crafty ones dotted around. Oh, here's our little engagement one that some pals bought for us. That's very sweet. Uh, this one, a friend of mine picked up from the Gilmore Girls set. This one is a tribute to little classic Christmas books. Oh, there's just so many that I absolutely love. Sometimes I see Christmas trees online and they're so stunning. And I'm like, wow, I wish, I wish mine looked like that. But then, <laughs> I love it. I like, of course my Christmas tree looks like this. Of course it does. Hello, you're very purry. Ready for a nice cozy evening? Me too. It's also quiz night in this house, which means only connect back to back with university challenge Ay -ay -ay -ay. but thank you so much for hanging out with me today i hope you enjoyed our nice little festive frolicking i'm hoping to get a book video filmed this week so i might see you pre this video with that uh here's my current read this is all girls by emily Layden, and i'm really enjoying it um you know me i i love a story of girlhood anyway i'm supposed to be signing off <laughs> thank you so much for watching thanks for hanging out with me today uh don't forget you can find me over on instagram and also tiktok um it's a, it's a scary world out there we'll see you very soon with another video bye bye <laughs> bye 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 <laughs> do you want some dinner is that why your tail is currently in my face come on then dinner time <laughs>